Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hey, welcome back for another filling station service. I'm your host, Pastor Matthew, and I'm super excited as you've joined me for another lesson today in our great adventure. Today we're talking about how Jesus is almost like our superhero because he is invincible. It's going to be a super awesome and exciting lesson. So here to get you started today is Travis the Traveler to tell you what's up. Hey guys, check it out here at the airport, ready to take off on another great adventure. You know, flying in airplanes can be kind of scary sometimes, but here's what I've learned is that Jesus can protect me. And, uh, you know, have you ever seen like a movie where like maybe an airplane was falling out of the sky or a train got derailed or something like that and a superhero saved them? Well, hopefully something like that doesn't need to happen for me today. But today we are talking about how Jesus is kind of like a superhero. He is in Invincible. Nothing can defeat him or destroy him. In fact, even when he died, he rose again on the third day. Not even death or the grave could defeat Jesus. And guess what? Our invincible Savior is coming back again someday to take all of us to be in heaven with him. And he will defeat sin once and for all. And we'll live with him forever in a new heaven and a new earth. It'll be awesome. So anytime, and I mean anytime, someone asks you, what's up? You tell them, Jesus is invincible. Stand up and say it with me. One, two, three. Jesus is invincible. All right, Travis the Traveler here. We'll see you next time. All right, you can tell me what's up. That's right. Jesus is invincible. Today we're learning about how Jesus is coming back one day to, to defeat sin once and for all and to create a new heaven and a new earth for all of us believers who follow him to live with him forever. It's going to be such an exciting lesson. And today we're going to learn about how we should watch and be ready for Jesus' return and how we should tell those around us all about him. Let's open up with a quick word of prayer. Father, I ask that you begin to speak to our hearts right now. Help us to quiet ourselves and to listen for your voice. God, that we would understand that Jesus is our invincible Savior and that he's coming back for each and every one of us to take us to be with that special place with him in heaven. And God, I ask that you would challenge us to tell others about him so that they might not miss that moment, that moment where Jesus is coming back for us, that they would know that he is their Lord and Savior as well. Father, I ask that you would be with us through the rest of the service today and help us to hear your voice in your holy name. Amen. All right. Hey, check out this memory verse song. This is our fourth week learning this verse, so you should just about have it down by now and see if you can keep up with our dancing man. All right. Let's try this again. Hebrews 9.28. Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him, to those who are waiting for him, to those who are waiting for him. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him, to those who are waiting for him. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. All right, let's say that verse one more time together. It's, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Hebrews 9, 28. Boys and girls, this is such a powerful verse. It's talking about how Jesus already came down on earth one time. And that time, it was so that he could bear our sins and that he could, he could sacrifice himself on the cross so that we could have forgiveness of our sins. But... It says that he's coming back a second time. And that second time that he's coming, he's taking us to be in a special place with him. He's coming to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. It's our job to watch and to be ready for Jesus, our invincible savior, to, to wait for him and to tell others about him so that when he comes back, they might go to be with him too. Let's think about that as we go into this time of praise and worship today. Hut, two, three, four, hut, two, three, four. 
Combat Chloe reporting for duty. I know you guys have been on your bums all day long, so we're gonna get up and do some worship warm ups. First, put your arms out like this, and we're gonna touch the opposite foot with the opposite hand. One, two, three, four. Now, we're gonna stand up straight and do some high knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're ready to worship Jesus today. Tell me what's up? That's right, Jesus is invincible. Do any of you have like a favorite superhero? Maybe they're really strong and powerful like the Incredible Hulk or Superman. Well, these heroes can be powerful, but ultimately they all have weaknesses that can cause them to be defeated. Take Superman, for example. He has, he basically can't be harmed. He's basically invincible unless someone has some kryptonite and then he can easily be taken down by just an average human. All it takes is that one thing that is his weakness. 
So, however, we're learning today about how Jesus is invincible. Now, what does it mean to be invincible? It means that you can't be defeated. You're all powerful. And Jesus, even when he was put to death on the cross, he chose to die on the cross for our sins. He could have called down legions of angels to protect him, but instead he died on the cross for our sins. But guess what? The story doesn't end there. Death didn't have victory over Jesus. The grave didn't have victory over Jesus. He rose again from the grave, proving that he is invincible. Well, there's an entire book in the Bible that's written about um, what, what Jesus is going to do when he comes back again. And that book is called Revelation. See, after Jesus rose from the grave, he spent 40 days on earth with the disciples. And then he ascended up into heaven. And now we know, um, just like our memory verse says, that he had come once to bear the sins of many, but he's coming back again to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. And so we're learning today about how Jesus has a special plan to come back and take the believers to be with him in heaven. And ultimately, one day he's got a special place prepared for us. Let's take a look at how John describes Jesus in Revelation chapter 1 verses 12 through 18. He says, I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And among the lampstands, someone like the son of man dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a gold sash around his chest. His hair on his head was white like wool, white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he had seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. Do you hear how John's describing Jesus? Jesus sounds like a mighty warrior here. And that's because this in this vision that John's having, it's right before Jesus is about to come back to earth. And when Jesus comes back, he will be our mighty warrior. We're going to see that invincible Jesus, that Jesus who can be our superhero. And, and here's the cool part is that the Bible says that when Jesus comes back, he's coming back to take each and every one of us to be with him. We as Christians, we call that the blessed hope, that when Jesus raptures us to heaven, when he takes us up to heaven to be with him, it's that blessed hope that we have that we get to look forward to that Jesus will take us to be with him in heaven. But what happens to everything else when we when we go to be with Jesus in heaven. You see, the Bible talks about how the earth, it's going to have some really evil people that take over. And everyone that wasn't following Jesus, they're going to be left behind. And it's going to be a really, really bad place where sin will, will take over the earth and people are going to face some really dark times. But then the Bible says that Jesus is going to come back and he will, he will reign for a thousand years. And everyone... Everyone that was sinful will be wiped from this earth and that we will follow Jesus. And that one day, um, while he's reigning for a thousand years, Satan will be locked up. And then Satan will be released to try to tempt people one more time. And then Jesus will destroy him once and for all because he's our invincible Savior. So Jesus has a plan to come back and wipe everything, all the sin from the earth. And guess what? The Bible says that not only is he doing that, but that we'll have a new heaven and a new earth where we'll get to dwell with him forever. Jesus is preparing a special place for us. And, and here's the cool thing is that, that when that happens, the Bible describes this place as a place where there will be no more pain or suffering, that God will wipe every tear from our eye. There will be no more death. The streets are made of gold. Doesn't that sound like a special place to you? I don't know about you, but that's a place where I want to go. And, and here's the deal though. The only way to make it there, the only way that we get to be a part of that is by following Jesus. Jesus is our invincible Savior. And at the end of time, see, boys and girls, there's things in this world that may seem tempting. They may seem good. Um, sometimes we might feel like lying can get us ahead or cheating on a test can help us get a good grade. But here's the deal is that those sinful things create separation between us and God. And, and I don't know about you, but I want to be rescued by an invincible Savior. I want you to pretend for a second that, that an aunt or uncle or maybe grandma or grandpa, they called and they said, I'm coming over and I want to take you to ice cream, but you have to be ready when I get there or else, or else we won't be able to go. What would you do? Of course, immediately you'd put your shoes on and you'd probably go right up to the door and you'd sit there and watch and wait for them to be ready. That's exactly how it should be with Jesus. 
We should be watching and waiting for him to come back and to take us all to be with him to that special place where there's no more pain, where there's no more suffering. We should be excited for that moment. But here's the other thing is that that invitation isn't just for you, it's for everyone. If your grandma and grandpa called and said, hey, everyone in your house gets to come for ice cream, do you think you'd just get ready and not tell anyone? No, you'd say, hey, they're coming. They're gonna take us to this great place. We're gonna get ice cream. You need to get ready so that you can come along and you don't miss it. It's the same thing with our relationship with Jesus. We should be ready and we should be telling those around us to get ready because he's coming back soon and we don't want to miss it. We don't want our friends to miss it. We want to be taken up into heaven to be with Jesus. But if our friends don't know who Jesus is, if they've never heard of his name, if our family isn't following Jesus, boys and girls, they're going to miss it. And I don't want them to miss that. So here's what we're going to do. As we pray this morning, I want you to begin to pray and say, Jesus, who can I tell about you? My invincible Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. And who do I need to share the gospel with? Let's sing this song together and let's begin to pray and say, God, who can I tell about Jesus? And let them know that he's coming back soon and they need to follow him. Let's sing this song together. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Built on before you, he silenced the blows of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are to life again. Oh, you have no coming back to take us to be in heaven with you. God, I ask that you would help each and every one of us to not just hear these words, but to watch and be ready for Jesus, to wait for him and to tell others around us that he's coming back soon so that they might be saved as well. We ask that in your holy name. And everyone said, amen. Wow. What an amazing service we've had today. Thank you, boys and girls, for tuning in. And I hope that you will take the challenge to go and tell those around you about Jesus and let them know he's coming back soon and they want to be ready for him. Thanks for tuning in.